Welcome back, everybody. So today we're going to answer a question that was asked in the comments about how to manage and juggle time supervising an undergrad student. Now, I assume that this is more geared towards an undergrad that's coming in to do some sort of research rather than teaching a class, because um, I don't really know many postdocs that are teaching any classes. So let's focus on your postdoc and you have an undergrad student or a medical student or you know somebody like that that's coming into the lab and you have to supervise them. And what are some pros and cons of this and what are ways that you can succeed in this and help them to succeed. So I'm actually gonna draw on a couple personal experiences that I have. So throughout graduate school and my postdoc, I actually had three different um, graduate students and medical students that came. I had, when I was in grad school, I had an undergrad student that for his senior thesis needed to come and spend some time in the lab. I had another undergraduate student when I was in my postdoc that again for like a senior thesis type project needed to come in and do some work in the lab. And then I also had a medical student that for an elective needed to do some research in a lab as part of his uh, medical school before doing step one. So what can you expect and how can you succeed? Well, the first thing is setting expectations. You need to remember that when you're a graduate student, you're in the lab every day. And sometimes when I say every day, I mean seven days a week. When you're a postdoc, it's the same thing. You're in there all the time. You're living and breathing research. Your project is something that you're thinking about all the time. When you have an undergrad student especially, but even if it's somebody like a medical student, they're only gonna come a couple of days a week and they're not living and breathing your research, right? They have their own classes that they're doing. You know, some of them, if they're in medical school, they're worried about, you know, step one that they're preparing for. If they're in undergrad, maybe they're thinking about going to graduate school. You know, they have other things going on and they're only gonna come maybe two to three days a week for a few hours each day. So you need to set expectations that they're not gonna come anywhere close to the depth of knowledge that you have. The second thing is that you need to think about what kind of project are they going to work on. Now, depending on your level and your aptitude, the PI that you're working for may tell you this is what they should work on, but they may not. They may ask you to come up with a project themselves or have you come up with a project yourselves. So when I was in graduate school, for example, um, it was more asked of me, hey, have him come and just help you with the experiments that you're doing. Um, you know, you don't need to come up with a separate side project, just let him come and help do the experiments that you're doing. So at the time, there was a lot of Western blotting that I needed to do for an experiment. So he came and every day that he came, I would just give him, you know, new reagents that he needed to use and let him do his Western blotting. And that was like basically what he learned as an undergrad student was how to do a Western blot. When I was in graduate, uh, when I was in my postdoc, I had an undergrad student come and, you know, I was kind of told, you know, this is kind of what an appropriate project should be for them and let her do her own little side project. And when I had a medical student come, the PI, um, when I was doing my postdoc, told me that I could come up with any kind of project I wanted for him. And so what I did was I started thinking about my own work that I needed to accomplish and then thought, are there any additional questions that would be really nice to have, but isn't something that needs to be done immediately? If it's something that needs to be done immediately, these are things that you should take on yourself. But if there's something that, you know, you can do with them that isn't immediate, that doesn't require a ton of time, that was something that I thought was the way to go. So for example, I thought cell culture was really good. Now, depending on how often they come, cell culture may not be ideal because, you know, you need to be in there every few days to do cell culture. However, for this experiment, they needed to be in about three days a week, which he was, and they needed to be able to do some basic cell culture and then take those cells and harvest them and try to answer a couple of questions by qPCR and Western blotting. And this was its own little side project. And so I was able to teach him how to do basic cell culture 
and then how to harvest cells and then perform a qPCR and a Western blot and design the proper controls that are needed for the experiment and how to use that information to drive forward a bigger question that we could take in vivo. And that was what he worked on for about five months. And it was about three days a week that he would come in. And if he wasn't able to come in for you know one day here or there, or if there was something that needed to be done in between, I would just fill in and do that part of the experiment for him. But he pretty much ran you know these kind of cell experiments for a few months. Now, the difficult part is being able to teach them what do they need to know. So don't forget, like I said, you need to set expectations. They're never going to know the same depth that you do. So you need to teach them the things that are applicable to them. So for him, what I explained is, you know, this is the broader context of what we're trying to answer. Okay, this is like my big project. I gave him the background of that. And then I explained, this is how this particular project will help inform this broader you know, context, okay? So cell experiment X is gonna help with my bigger project because of this. This is what we're trying to answer, okay? And then go over experimental design. This is important, is going over experimental design, setting up the proper controls, making sure that what you're doing is actually gonna answer your hypothesis, um, and then how your data, whether you accept or reject your hypothesis, will drive your next experiment scientific method. Um, so as I went through that, you could see the gears start moving within his head. So what he learned when he was there was a few things. The first thing that he learned was what is the scientific method? You know, more than just hearing it, but like how does it actually play out? How does he learn a couple of new techniques? How does he learn to incorporate that data into a broader project. And most importantly, just learning, you know, from the standpoint of somebody in the lab, how much time and effort goes into things. It's really hard to gauge how hard or how long it takes to move a project forward until you've actually done it. You know, so he went for a few days and spent months working and answered, you know, one simple question. So now he has a broader understanding of, wow, if it takes this much effort to answer this question, then, you know, how long must it take to answer an entire project worth of questions? You know, like a larger scope of a, of a question, right? It could take years or decades even, depending on what you're asking. Now, going back to the original question that was asked in the comments section was how to actually manage time doing this. And this is a really difficult thing to answer because it really is going to depend on each individual and the situation that they have. What I would say to do to start is to give some reading. So by now you're familiar with the different review articles and, and original papers that are important to the work that you're going to be giving. So give them a review article to start and just let them read through it and then talk to them about what actually is in there. Again, knowing they need a surface level understanding, but sometimes just one or two review articles is enough to really immerse them in the kind of research that they're gonna be doing. After that, what I suggest is if you have some common techniques that you're gonna be using, so for example, if you're gonna be doing cell culture and qPCR, do qPCR and cell culture and let them follow you. If other people in the lab are doing it, let them go follow them. Start training them that this is how you do cell culture. This is how you split cells. This is how you count cells. You know, this is how you do your PCR. Like start training them over and over and over in that aspect. So the first like couple weeks just need to be training over and over and over in how you do something. And you need to be able to take time to sit and supervise them. So that means that you're gonna have to shift your schedule around. When I had people in the lab and I was watching them, you know, what would happen is I'd end up having to spend more time in the lab than normal. That's because during the day when I would normally do my cell culture experiments, I had to be watching him do his. Now, at the beginning, what you could do is you could try timing them so that they go together. So if I have to do cell culture and he has to do cell culture, let's do them together and we could do it side by side. But sometimes it doesn't line up that way. So he may have to do cell culture and then he may need to be doing a PCR experiment. You know, let's say he needed to do PCR. This is like a whole day thing, like extracting the RNA, you know, cleaning it up, doing the 
CAR T step, doing the PCR. You know, if I had animal experiments that needed to be done, I had to like shift those around to do it during times where he was incubating, where I could go run and do them and I didn't need to be watching him. You know, so sometimes it wasn't one-to-one -one and I could do them with him. Sometimes you have to split it up. The best advice that I could give is to not take on too much at once. So only take on one student at a time. You don't need to be taking on more than one. There's no need for that. The reason that you want to be taking on these students in the first place is one, to pay it back. So somebody had to teach you, so now it's your turn to teach somebody else, but also to start developing those skills of teaching others, okay? This is something that they don't teach you in graduate school or in your postdoc. They don't teach you how you need to start training others. And this is an important skill, whether you're going into industry, academia, into government work somewhere, you're gonna need to be able to teach others. Um, so it's really important to start getting that skill down. I highly, highly recommend taking on, on somebody. Um, you know, But just remember that it is a time sink. You're gonna have to devote time to this. You know, When it comes to the end, they're gonna have to prepare a PowerPoint maybe to give a presentation, or they're gonna have to write a paper um, so you're going to have to sit there and take time to go over that with them, right? How do you fix your PowerPoint? How do you do the conclusions for your data? How do you write up a report? Um, you're going to be asked to maybe grade them, and so you're going to have to take time to do grading. It's going to take time. So don't take on more than one person. That said, though, it shouldn't be taking up more than 10% of your time, in, in all honesty. Um, at first, when they're getting up and running off the ground, yes, you're going to have to invest a little bit more time, and it may slow down a little bit of the work that you're doing, and that's okay. But quickly, they should be able to start getting off the ground, and you should be able to start getting back to, to the way that you were working before. Um, I hope that this helps, and I hope that this gives a little bit of insight into the ways that we can help others in terms of mentoring as we're postdocs. And I think that this is a really important step. Like I said, it, it really does make a difference. Um, and this way you can always put onto your CV or in a cover letter somewhere that you have experience mentoring someone, that you have actually taught somebody how to do experiments and how to interpret data. This is really important no matter what job you're gonna go into, being able to say, I have experience mentoring others. Okay, so with that, I'll, you know, catch you guys in the next one. I hope everyone has a great day. Bye.